Hi there, this is Tracy Carradine from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial will show you how to paint an orca well with a galaxy background in a pretty surreal ocean scene. So I am doing this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my horizon line. So I have a ruler and I'm going to mark the 4 inch line from the bottom of the canvas, so make a little mark, and then I'm going to get a straight edge. So I'm going to use my T-square ruler so I can line it up to the side of the canvas, and I'm going to go ahead and draw that horizontal line across the canvas. So this line is going to divide where the sky and mountains will be and where the water will be. The sky is a galaxy technique and I'll be demonstrating that for you. I'll be using a three-quarter flat brush as well as a sponge. This is just a regular bath sponge that I ripped up. Um, doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can use a craft sponge and I will be using several colors for my galaxy sky. I'll be using phthalo blue, dioxazine purple. I will be using quinacridone magenta, titanium white and Mars black. You'll need to start with your three quarter wash brush first. We're gonna start by applying color to the outer edges of the canvas. So I'm just gonna load it in the water and kind of pat it dry. And I'm gonna load it into the black. So grabbing a teeny tiny bit of black on the corner of my brush and grabbing a lot more of the phthalo blue. So we're going to paint the border of this. This is going to be the darker outer part of our galaxy. And again, you only need a teeny tiny bit of that black because phthalo blue is already a super dark color. So that black really is used to get it to be a little bit darker but not too dark. And so I'm painting these X style strokes, uh, flip flopping the brush, kind of cross hatching textured strokes on the outer edge of the canvas. And I'm only doing this to get that color on there. I'm not doing any galaxy technique just yet. And then every once in a while, I'll grab a little bit of the black on the corner of the brush. Uh, the outer parts of this sky is super dark. So just adding that little bit of black is gonna make sure the outer edges are the darkest part of our sky. So I'm just gonna keep applying that color. Again, the goal is just to get that canvas covered up and I'm only doing a border on the outer left and right and I'll be doing it at the top of the canvas as well up here. I did not add that blue to the bottom part of the horizon line. So just the left and right side and the top side. So applying that color, you wanna work pretty fast because we're gonna be working our way inwards with the color. And as we're working our way inwards, we're gonna need to blend that color. So work kind of fast here. And so I'm gonna to transition to the next color. I'm gonna grab some dioxazine purple and I'm gonna work my way inwards. Now this purple is super, super dark. So I'm gonna grab little bits of white on my brush and that's gonna lighten that purple up a little bit enough to get that purple to show. Dioxazine purple is such a dark color. It's uh, very, very dark, almost close to that Mars black darkness. And so adding that, again, adding that little bit of white is gonna brighten it up. So on my palette, I may even grab the white and kind of mix that purple with the white on the palette. So I'm gonna keep working my way inwards here, applying that color, same kind of strokes, going X style cross hatching textured strokes. It is blending a little bit with that blue and black combination. Notice that I'm leaving the inner part white. I'm not going in any further because I'm gonna keep adding other colors in there. So next, wipe the brush off and grab the quinacridone magenta and start applying your quinacridone magenta in that area and start blending it with that previous color and just keep flip flopping your brush to create the texture. The thing with this quinacridone magenta is now it's it's a warm color so you just kind of want to work it a little bit to get that color to blend in a little bit more. You still want to leave the center part white so leave a big sp or 
probably a two to three inch space in the middle blank. And then we're gonna grab our sponge here and start doing some blending and galaxy effect with the sponge. So I'm just gonna rinse off my three quarter flat, dry it and set it to the side because we're done with this brush for now. So here's my sponge. Again, this is just a ripped up bath sponge. I'm gonna load it in the white and a little bit of purple. And when I apply this, I can dab it and I can also press and turn it. So I'm gonna dab it at first in the middle and it's gonna create a spongy texture on there. And that lighter part is gonna start creating the galaxy effect. So I can take that and go outwards in the darker area, but for the most part, we wanna concentrate on the middle part. So the colors that are on the canvas are still kind of wet and still able to kind of blend a little bit so I can press and turn it'll blend those colors a little bit you just don't want to over sponge it and over blend it so that lighter color that I'm applying again a little bit on the outer parts mostly on the inner parts and I'm going to go back in with some more white so I'm going to add some more white on my brush and this time I'll grab a little bit of the quinacridone magenta on the sponge, not the brush. So there's white and quinacridone magenta, and of course a little bit of that purple left. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in our center area. So this is like a light pink color that's happening in the center area, just covering up that canvas. I'm just dabbing and doing the press and turn thing. Getting that to blend in, getting all that canvas to cover up. You just want to be careful if you do a lot of press and turn it may over blend the colors on there so you just want to be really gentle with it um, another tip i can give you is when you're loading the sponge you just want to make sure that you're not overloading with too much paint and you can always turn your sponge to a different area so this time i grabbed phthalo blue and i'm going to go back in and add some phthalo blue in this area kind of blend that in make that part darker so add another layer and dimension to make this area a little bit darker and more spongy looking and you can press and turn um, be careful not to add too much darkness right in the middle we want that middle part to be bright it's going to be the galaxy milky way line that's going up in the middle that's going to be super bright add a little bit of white in there the white is blending with the phthalo blue a little bit so i'm just adding that right in the middle again lots of white right there in the center and then blending it back outwards and then I'm gonna add a little bit on the outer parts. So the thing with painting galaxies is you can leave it like this and kind of simplify it, but I like to just keep going with it and add more dimensions of color of darkness on the outer parts of it and more brightness on the inner parts of it. So I'm just gonna go in here, add some darker colors, some of that dioxazine purple, a little bit of that black, just to make sure the outer part is super, super dark. and then keeping that inner part super bright. And when we go and add the splatter star effect, it's really gonna all come together here. So if yours is looking all mushy and not really galaxy-like, the stars are gonna make up for that, I promise. And I'm just gonna go in, a little bit of um, white, add a little bit of the dioxazine purple, dab it, twist it. So just keep working the colors, adding different dimensions and layers. Um, you just don't wanna overdo it because then your sky is all gonna mush together and be the same color. So doing the pressing and turning thing really helps to create that texture. I'm gonna go in there and add a little bit of white right there in the center. Again, you can position your sponge to an area that's clean. So when you're switching colors, you can move your sponge to a cleaner part of the sponge by pinching it different ways. I'm adding more white right there in the center and then taking it and dabbing it and blending it back outwards. Okay, so we're done with the sponge effect for our galaxy sky. And next I'm going to grab the toothbrush for the splatter effect. So I'm gonna freshen up my titanium whites because I want these stars to be white and not white mixed with other colors. I'm gonna get that on the palette here. 
And when you do splatter star effect, you want to water down the toothbrush slightly. So I like to just dip my finger in the water and then grab the white on my finger. And that seems to give a good proportion. You don't want it too thick or too thin. Too thin and it's just going to drip everywhere. Too thick and it's going to splat thick blotches that you're not going to want. So you really want to test it out on a separate surface first before applying it to your sky. And I pretty much did the little splatters all throughout the sky, but make sure that you concentrate, um, do some extra splatters right there in the middle where the bright part of your sky is. And then when you're done, you can just wipe it off. I like to wipe it off with the baby wipe and rinse it off later. We'll be using the splatter effect later when we do the splash for the whale tail. And then, so what I'm gonna do next is I have this brush. This is a five zero round brush and I'm going to take it and I'm going to create some more brighter stars in the sky. So I'm gonna make a dot with the brush I'm going to take my finger and smear it outwards and it's going to make a brighter, I call them blurry light effects. I do this when I do fireflies or pretty much anything where it needs to be kind of a blurry light looking effect. And so that's just going to make it look like a super bright glowing star in the sky. You can do several of them. I did a total of five and then when you're done doing the, the blurry part of it, I'll show you here in just a second. You can take your brush and make a dot in the center and that'll make it look like the star is super bright and glowing. And then you can go in and add more little dots, little clusters of white star dots all over the place. I like to put them in clusters, so in threes and fours, and maybe a couple more blurry dots. So when you're done with the stars in the sky, we're going to move on to the mountain. So there's a mountain range just above the horizon line. And I did that with a number eight round brush. So I'm gonna get my little tiny brush all cleaned up here and set it to the side and grab this brush. So this is the number eight round brush, dip it in the water. And I'm gonna distribute that water in with this Mars black so it gets slightly watered down. And I'm gonna paint the line that represents the mountain range. So I'm gonna start over here on the right I'm going to kind of dip down and go up and kind of make it uneven, not really pointed, but curved points, make um, several different peaks for that mountain. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint it in. So when you paint it in solid, you just want to make sure that you go all the way down to that horizon line, that uh, pencil line that we drew in the beginning. So just paint it in solid black. Again, if you need to slightly water down that black, you can. Mars black tends to be a really thick paint for some reason, but adding a bit of water in there really helps to get it to flow. You want to try to get that horizon line to be nice and straight. You don't necessarily have to have it perfect because we're going to go in and paint water below that mountain anyway, but just as straight as possible along that horizon line. This black will need to dry before you can move on to the next step. So I'm going to go back in and do something else with the stars. This is optional. Um, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. So I'm going to get my little five zero liner brush back and I'm gonna do some points on these stars. So I'm just going from the middle and kind of dragging that brush upwards and to the left and the right to make it look more like a twinkling star. So I'm just gonna do this to each of those stars. For this one right here, I'm actually making it into a shooting star. So I just took the paint and just kind of dragged it to the right. Next I'm going to divide up the mountain range, so assuming the black is dry, if it's not you can get a hair dryer and dry it real quick. And I'm going to grab my 5-0 round brush and the titanium white. So I'm going to divide up my mountain range so that I can add highlights to it. So I'm going to pick some of the peaks 
like this one for example, and I'm just going to do a wavy line going diagonal towards the left and going all the way down to the horizon line. I'm going to pick another peak and do the same thing. So just make a diagonal line that kind of waves down to the horizon line. And I'm just going to do it to this one. And you don't have to do it to all the peaks. You can pick a few. And this one right here actually didn't go all the way to the horizon line. It went to the next peak. So a little different. Well, that's as many as I'm going to do. Like I said, you don't have to do it to each of the mountain peaks. Um, but to do the highlight, I'm actually going to use the thalo blue with a little bit of titanium white on the tip of the three-quarter flat brush. I'm only adding a little bit of paint to the brush. In fact, it may be helpful to wipe off some of that paint. And I'm just taking the width of the brush and I'm dragging it in a diagonal direction downwards. So as I'm painting those strokes, that paint is running dry and I'm leaving the bottom part uh, black so that color is brightest towards the line and it fades away quickly down into the darker area. So that creates the highlight and the shadow in the mountain. And I'm just going to do this to each of the mountain peaks. So loading it in the blue and the white and starting on the right side of the next line and dragging it down at an angle. Um, again, it's got to be very dry. If your stroke is not looking dry and kind of see-through and feathery, you need to wipe the brush off so there's not a lot of paint on your brush. And also you're doing the stroke very lightly. So if you press super hard, you're going to get a brighter, more opaque stroke. You want to just hold that brush very lightly and do the other peak. So each of the mountains have the color on the right side of the mountain. And then some of these mountains where I didn't do the line, we can do a very faint little subtle highlight in there to give that mountain some texture. And we can add a little bit of texture over here too. Next we're going to paint the water. So you're going to need to rinse off the brush and dry it. So we're still using this 3 quarter inch flat wash brush for the water. Rinse it off, dry it. The colors in the water are the quinacridone, the titanium white, and a little bit of the dioxazine purple. I'm going to start out by mixing the quinacridone, that's that magenta color, with some white. Grabbed a little bit of dioxazine purple on there. So my brush is loaded with those three colors not mixed all the way because I want those colors to kind of blend on the canvas. I'm going to take the tip of my brush and I am going to paint the line underneath the mountain. So I'm just going to gently paint this horizontal line and use the brush full width strokes going down and so basically this water consists of those three colors and I'm just going to paint that entire water area using that pink, the white, and the purple. So keep applying those colors. I'm going to freshen up my purple here and apply that purple and blend it up into the pink. So the water is slightly lighter way, the, way in the distance. And grab some white and I'm going to blend that white in there, blend it up into the water. So basically you're just going to use a combination of the purple, pink, and white. Let those colors blend. Make sure you're doing all horizontal strokes and try not to overblend because if you overblend the color will all turn the same and um, try to make it slightly lighter towards the horizon line so the pink is a little bit brighter up there if you look at the final painting picture and the water is just slightly darker towards the bottom. Um, don't worry about white horizontal water lines just yet. We'll be doing those texture lines later in the tutorial.
I'm going to go in and add some more white to this. So just on the tip of the brush, I grab that titanium white and I'm just doing a few subtle white horizontal strokes in the water. Um, right there, it got too messy, too, or too bright. So I'm just going to fix it real quick, add a little bit more pink and kind of blend it back in. So just be careful with that titanium white, super strong color and it can take over fast. All right, I am going to go ahead and dry this painting. I will be demonstrating how to draw the orca whale next, and it's best if the paint is dry all the way when you use your piece of chalk to do this drawing. So I have a traceable link to this video if you wanna use that. Um, if you don't, we can go ahead and draw it together right now. I have, this is just a plain piece of chalk, and our orca whale main, the body shape is very similar to like a banana shape. So I'm gonna start above our mountain range, so about four inches above the mountain range. I want to draw a large arc shape. We don't see the whale's tail in this painting, so that's kind of nice. Um, it just goes to a point, but we don't see the fins of the tail. And then the, the head kind of curves down a little bit wide at the end, and then the whale's tail goes to a point. Chalk will erase easily with a baby wipe or a wet paint brush. So if you mess up, you can just erase it and kind of fix it. Um, the dorsal fin, we're going to do that. So just kind of a curve at the top and it goes to a point. Make it kind of more curved. And then we have the front flin fins, so the pectoral fins. And... This one over here is going to be sticking out. And then we have an, the, um, the line that divides the black part from the under white part of the whale. So I drew that line from the edge of his um, nose and it curves down to the tail. And then we have his other fin that I'm going to draw. And then we can adjust this as we paint in. This is just, the drawing is always meant to be just like a guideline. And then we have the eye patch shape. And then we have the back patch where that, uh, that piece is going to be white as well. And then I'm not going to draw the tail. I'm going to do splash lines on the bottom. So I did some very subtle lines to represent the splash at the bottom. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint our whale in. So I have the color Mars Black on my palette and a number eight round brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and start painting that in. So all the whale at the top is black. And I'm just gonna take the round brush and go ahead and paint that shape in. So slightly water down the black if you need to. I'm going to go around the eye patch. Um, actually, I, I do end up painting over that eye patch, but you can go around it if you need to. It goes down to a point. So really define that shape, the line. And don't worry about your chalk lines if you're going outside or inside of your chalk lines. It's okay. Uh, we can always erase the chalk later. Now I'll paint the dorsal fin. With this fin, I decided to make it go in a different direction than my drawing and that's okay that happens which is going to go curved to a point so take your time with this um, there's no need to rush when you're filling it in and then paint the rest of this body and again the white patches that are on um, the black part of the whale I did paint over um, and but when this dries I can go back over with the white and apply those shapes again
Then I'll go in and paint the pectoral flippers. So this one over here kind of goes to a point. And then this one as well. I'll make this line a little bit more even. And then when you're done with the black, you can now go ahead and rinse your brush off. I recommend drying the black before moving on to the white part, just so when we paint the white pieces, the black isn't gonna bleed into the white. And so rinse off, dry, and freshen up some titanium white. And so you're gonna just go ahead and paint the under part of the whale with the white so that piece that you drew under there just be really careful especially if your black isn't dry all the way take your time do it little by little and this piece right here is going to curve a little bit downwards because that's where his mouth is Back here we have the side patch, so I'm just gonna curve it. Make that little shape. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the eye patch. So just make that little kidney bean shape kind of curved towards the right and it goes to somewhat of a point on the left. And then there's, we don't see the eye in this painting so you don't have to worry about that detail. Just going to touch up this white, make sure that all the edges and the lines are defined. It's really helpful if you can turn your canvas to different angles, turn it upside down if you need to. That helps you get into these small areas. And also, I mentioned this earlier, those chalk lines will erase later. So if any chalk lines are still showing, we can wait for that to dry and get our baby wipe and get rid of the chalk lines. I'm actually going to do that right now, so I'm just going to be really careful because that's still a little bit wet. So this is just a baby wipe, and I'm taking it and erasing the chalk lines. The next step I'm going to do is optional, but does give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm gonna do some highlighting on our whale, but not with white, I'm just gonna make gray. So mix a little bit of black with titanium white. I'm just gonna take that and lightly add some lines on the top of the whale's head. I'm gonna mix some more gray on my palette. So you don't want the color to be too bright because you don't want it to be 
take away from the black and the white contrast on the whale. So just a very uh, subtle form of gray. I'm going to add that to the top of the dorsal fin just a little bit. Gives it just a little bit of dimension. And like I said, this is optional if you're simplifying this painting. This step can definitely be skipped. It's not going to make a huge difference in the painting. I'm just going to let that fade a little bit down. Then I'll add a little bit down here under his eye patch and a little bit on his front fins. I'm going to go ahead and touch up this pectoral fin with a little bit more black. I am going to add a little bit of that gray on the bottom, so the gray and just touching up the bottom part right along the edge. Just a little bit because too much and we don't want to lose the contrast of the white. In fact, I'm going to go in and go back over this. Got a little bit too dark in that area, so adding a little bit more white, kind of touch that up and blend it back out a little bit more. Then I'm going to paint the top of his head, just a little subtle white highlight and the top of the dorsal fin as well, but that's it, no extra white in that area. And so we're done with the basic part of the orca. We're going to move on to, this was a fun part, the splash of our whale. So we want to freshen up the titanium white and we'll be using our number eight round brush again. So make sure it's all rinsed off and dried. load it in the titanium white and so we want to start at the bottom and just make these textured strokes in there to form the splash so I'm just kind of painting at an angle and then going a little bit more horizontal to form the splash that's in the water and it curves and it goes up so holding that brush very very lightly very loosely is going to create those kind of wavy lines um, you don't want to press too hard on the brush you want to make your strokes very light and um, make your splashes go up be expressive in this area your splash marks can kind of go in all different directions and then of course on the water part it's got to be more horizontal you can have your splash lines go more upwards towards the fins and you can even have some water lines going down from the fins. Some of these splashes that are more up in the air and not necessarily touching the water are more dry brush so not so much opaque on the when you do the dry brush you're holding that brush very very lightly you're not pressing hard you're not applying a lot of paint to that area so it makes it look kind of dry and more like a, a translucent part of the splash. Um, I did use my toothbrush to do more splatter effect in this area. So kind of the same thing like what you did with the stars, load it in the water and then the white and do your splash. Just make sure you concentrate in that area and you're not making splashes all over the canvas on the bottom. So just in that area, of course you can have little dots cover part of the whale, that's fine. Um, just make sure you concentrate right there where that big splash is, so that's kind of a fun effect. So I'm going to touch up the pectoral fin, so with that round brush and the Mars Black, I'm just actually going to make this go a little bit more to the point, touch it up a bit.
do a little bit more defining on this black part. Next, I'm going to do the rock formation that's on the lower right part of the canvas. So that is done with pretty much the same colors as the mountain range in the background. But I used the black, the phthalo blue, and the white. So we're going to start with the Mars black and our three-quarter flat wash brush. Um, you can also use the round brush to do this. I just happened to grab the flat brush. So load your um, the tip of the brush in the black and you want to define the rock edge. So we're going to make a sort of a wavy line in that area. I'm going to grab the phthalo blue and I'm going to start filling this in. So when we fill this in, if you look at the final picture, it's kind of this angular texture thing going on. Um, so I'm going to paint in different angular strokes here with this blue and I'll, I'll be adding white in here shortly and I'll show you. So paint short angular strokes, flip flopping your brush to create that texture. I'll wipe my brush off when I introduce this white because it's gonna turn gray if I don't uh, wipe it off. So mix the blue and the white together. It's gonna make a bright blue and then you can see right away what happens here. So adding that lighter blue in there, gonna give it that pretty effect. So I'll just paint short angular strokes all throughout that rock shape. Then I'll add some more white towards the top edges. So little angular strokes along the top. Gives it that extra boost of brightness in that area. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off, grab the black, and do some angular strokes down towards the bottom with that darker color. The last thing I'm going to do in this painting are the water texture lines. So I'm going to grab my uh, round brush, the number eight round brush, and titanium white. And I'm just going to paint very um, subtle white horizontal lines all throughout using the tip of that brush. So a few horizontal lines here and there, um, kind of smaller in the distance, kind of longer, wider towards the bottom, but it doesn't have to be that way if you don't want to. I'll do some longer splash lines, some more of those longer lines over here on the bottom. And some more touch-ups here and there. So I'll touch up some of the markings and Again, the rest of this painting is pretty much just touch-ups, whatever you need to kind of adjust. Maybe some more splash lines. If you want to do more stars in the sky, you can do more stars. Just try not to go overboard on your touch-ups because sometimes that happens. Um, make sure you take a step back and look at your painting to make sure that it feels finished. Um, I'm doing a little bit of blue down here on the bottom. But that's basically it. This is the conclusion of how to paint our galaxy orca whale. You can sign your name, show it off. Thanks for following along to this tutorial and thanks for watching.